So you're ready to start an online business. You have all these ideas of what you wanna do. You're super excited, but as you start diving into it and begin setting up things that will really help you make an income, you might notice that you're starting to be asked for things like your tax ID number. Are you an LLC or a sole proprietor or an S corp? What does that even mean, right? You begin hearing terms like disclaimers, privacy policies, and before you know it, things just got a lot less fun and a lot more stressful. If you are looking for answers to these questions and are wondering, is my blog legal? Am I going to get myself in trouble? Stick around because we are diving into the legalities of blogging today. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you are new here, I'm Maureen. I help new and growing female entrepreneurs build a profitable blogging business on WordPress without the stress so that they can turn their passions into profits and make a massive impact on the world. If that sounds like you, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you don't miss any of the videos I post on this channel each and every week. Now, before we dive into all this legal stuff, let me first say that I'm not a lawyer, not even close. So the information that I'm giving you in this video, it's not meant as legal advice. You know, everyone's situation is unique. So I do urge you to do your own research as well and consult a lawyer before taking any legal action. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's first start out by defining some terms that can seem quite intimidating when you are first starting out. And these terms are sole proprietorship, LLC, and S-Corp. When you start a business, whether it's a brick and mortar business or an online one, you need to consider the legal structure of the business that you are creating. So are you working on your own? Are you setting up this business with a partner? Are you having shareholders? This will determine how your business needs to be registered. So let's first start with the term sole proprietorship. It's a big word, but sole proprietorship means that you are doing business as yourself. And in many states, you can use your name without needing to officially register it. And I believe your social security number is your tax ID because you yourself are your business. Now, again, I'm not a lawyer or an attorney, so make sure that you consult uh, your own lawyer before making these business decisions, okay? Now, using your own name can be a really good choice if you are trying to brand yourself as an expert in your field. A lot of people do this. It allows you also to pivot in your business if need be because your name's not associated with any specific niche. Like, if your name, your niche was or your URL was moneysavingmom.com and then you switch to a different niche like say in the fitness space then that would be a little bit of a problem because money saving mom doesn't really have anything to do with uh, fitness so you can see how using your name it can brand you as an expert but it, it can also allow you to pivot if need be if you are using a different business name other than your own name, you can still be set up as a sole proprietorship, but you will need to register that name to be able to legally do business under that name. Now, before you register your business name, it's really important to make sure that no one else is already using it. So this can start with a simple Google search. Once you have looked there and are clear, you wanna check social media channels. And then lastly, check out the United States Patent and Trademark Office to make sure no one else has patented your name already. And I will put a link in the description below to that site so you can check it. Once you know that your business name is available, you will then need to check with your state on the steps you need to take to register it. And each state has its own process for registering businesses in you can typically, I think you can just find that out with what you need to do by Googling, you know, how to register a business in whatever state you live in. Okay, next up is an LLC, which stands for Limited Liability Company. If you want some added protection so that you're not just running your business as yourself, then you'll want to consider an LLC. The LLC structure, it, it creates a separate entity so that your business is separate from yourself. And that basically means if any legal action was taken against your business, it wouldn't necessarily affect yourself or your personal assets. Now, I have registered this business as an LLC, which involves having a separate bank account for all business purposes. And everything has to be completely separate from my personal assets. 
Now, most bloggers will likely not need this when they're first starting out, especially if you're not making any money yet, because consider this, there are certain fees involved with registering as an LLC, but always consult your lawyer again for legal advice concerning your personal situation and setting this up. But in my experience, when you're first starting out and not making a ton of money, you likely will not need an LLC at this point. And last up is an S Corp, which you most likely will not need to consider when starting a blogging business, unless you're working with shareholders, which I don't think any of you are. From my understanding, an S Corp, it's, it's a business that chooses to to pass corporate income, losses, deductions, and credit through shareholders for federal tax purposes. Now, this is, this is completely foreign to me. So again, consult your lawyer for more information on that. I hope that cleared up these terms a bit for you. I know when I first started, they were very confusing to me. I hope that gave you some clarity. Let me know in the comments which one you are considering for your business. Okay, then once you have a grasp on the legal structure of your business, you also want to make sure that you have the appropriate legal pages on your site to protect you. I have a video, I will put it up above, that goes into more detail about these pages, but I want to briefly go over them in this video as well, since we're talking all about blogging legally. So three specific legal pages you want to have on your site are a privacy policy, which is uh, a page that states how a company or a website collects, handles, processes data of its customers and visitors. This is a page that is definitely required by law on your site. And it basically, it explains how the information you collect is used. And this page will help protect you legally and provide your audience with just those details on exactly how you use their information. A privacy policy is also needed to comply with the general data protection regulation GDPR, which is a European law that you need to follow. Next up, your terms and conditions page or your terms of use service. This is the page that you're going to need, and it's basically your website rules. They help explain what is permitted on your site and what is prohibited, and it really just forms a legal binding contract between you and your website user. Next up is the disclaimer page. Now you don't want to be held legally responsible for anything you publish on your blog. So this page helps protect you from lawsuits. It's where you can disclaim or deny liability for the content that you're publishing on your blog. And it basically warns your visitors that they are solely responsible for any kind of actions that they take as a result of the information published on your blog. Now I know I just dropped a bunch of legal jargon on you. And if you're like, wondering how the heck you set this up or even begin to know what to put in there in these pages. I have a super simple solution. It's what I've done. I recommend it to all my students, my courses and my private clients. And that is to invest in pre-made templates created by a lawyer that you can just plug your information into. <laughs> Again, I'm not a lawyer, but for my business, I have researched a lot of paid legal templates and my go-to is um, a mirror from the self guru. I use her templates for my pages and for my contracts. She has honestly been the best price and for the quality and the comprehensive templates that you get, it's, it's a very small investment into your business and it's hundred percent worth it for that peace of mind when it comes to knowing like your blog's protected legally and you don't have to worry about any of that. If you want more information about these, I will put a link for them in the description below, but let's quickly check out some of them together here real quick so that you can get a better idea of what's included. So when you're in your internet browser, you can type in the creativeimpact.com forward slash legal, and that will take you to Amira's page of her legal bundles. Now I am a affiliate for Amira, but the only reason I am is because I use these legal templates and I love them. I think they're amazing. So if you do use my link, I want you to know that I do get a very small commission for referring you. And again, I would never be an affiliate or refer you guys to anything that I didn't use and love myself. So once you're on the page, there is a link at the top that says, give me my bundle. You can click on that. And this gives you the top three bundles that she offers. You can see over here on the left, you're going to see tons of reviews, tons of five stars for these templates. Also, she often has discounts running. So if you're checking out this site at a time where there's a discount, make sure to, to click for the discount um, so that you get the best rate for these. So the 
starter, I'm going to go through each one of these for you so you can see what's included, but I also highly suggest you go on and check out them for yourself. The starter legal bundle is great for those just starting out. It comes with that privacy policy that includes all the GDPR stuff you need, and it gives you the disclaimer template for that page and the terms and conditions template. So these are the three like must-haves on your site. If you wanted to upgrade to the premium legal bundle, you get those three pages, plus you get the sponsor's post contract, if there's any sponsored posts that you're working with, or independent contractors, or also guest blogger agreements um, if you're having people guest blog on your site. So this would be the six template one, which is the premium bundle. And then the VIP bundle comes with 16 templates. It's the best value. Um, for everything you get because you're getting everything that's in the premium and the, the starter bundle, but you're also getting a lot more things, affiliate agreements, if, if you're running affiliate programs, coaching agreements, if you're a coach. So take a look through these. And then in addition to all that, they all come with bonuses. So in the starter bundle, you're getting um, these different bonuses that come included within the template or within the Within here, you're gonna have all this information included and so on for each of these different tiers. And as you scroll down, you'll also get the membership access. The total value is super high. I mean, you're dealing with a lawyer, but for, well, uh, as of today, it's for this, the starter bundle is 197. The premium is 297 and the VIP is 597. And honestly, you can even hire a lawyer to write one of these pages for 597. So it's a great deal. Then you can see we can go further down and um, just you can get a better idea of what's in each one. And then when you're ready, you can you can grab the bundles as you go. Okay. And there's testimonial videos if you need some more information. But I highly, highly recommend these templates if you are just getting started and need to make your blog legal. Amira also has, if you scroll back up all the way to the top here, she also has um, frequently asked questions. So if you're wondering more about how this all works, you can check out all this stuff and you can see how each of these work. So basically what happens is when you purchase it, you're getting these different templates and she highlights exactly where you need to plug in your information and exactly what information you need to plug in. All right, you should now have a much better idea to answer the question, is my blog legal? We've gone over the different legal structure options for your blogging business and some of the legal pages that you need to have on your blogging website. Plus, we went over a few that are important to consider down the line as your business grows. Now, if you are interested in learning more about being legal, I have that other video that I'll put down below. And I also put a link in the show notes and the comment section for quick access to those templates. You get immediate access to them after you purchase them and they come with super simple directions for all of us non-lawyers. So you can get your legal pages up on your site quickly and easily. Please like this video if you liked it. Please share this video with any and all of your blogging friends or Facebook groups or communities who may also be asking, is my blog legal? And I will see you next time, guys. Bye.